Aging is the major cause of sickness in the world by a large distance. And, of course, sickness is the major cause of suffering in the world by a large distance. So, for me, that is a proof, that is an absolutely clear argument that aging is humanity's number one problem and that the leaders in this world, thought leaders, scientific leaders, political leaders, all types of leaders, need to be shouldering the responsibility that comes with that fact. The responsibility to lead humanity forward into a post-aging world as soon as possible. And I believe that the best way to start there is to ask why aging is so different from infections. And I mean different in terms of our level of success. Over the past few decades, over the past century or more, in fact, we have made huge progress against infectious diseases. The reason why the life expectancy in Brazil is 33 years more now than it was in the 1940s is mostly because Brazil has become more prosperous and therefore more able to provide its population with the simple medicines that were developed starting in the 19th century that really work against infectious diseases. But even in the wealthiest countries, progress that has been made so far against the diseases and disabilities of old age has been very small. We will not, I believe, learn how to bring aging under genuine medical control by studying existing human variation. So, what should we do? Well, of course, most people think there's nothing we can do. Most people think, yes, okay, maybe this really is the world's biggest problem, but so what? It's an insoluble problem. Aging is inevitable, it always will be, it's natural, it's universal, there's nothing we can do. Right? Wrong. I will explain now why that is wrong. Aging is actually not really a phenomenon of biology at all. It's a phenomenon of physics. The reason that the human body ages is simply because the human body is a machine with moving parts. And any machine with moving parts, even a car, whether it's alive or not, a machine with moving parts will do itself damage it will change its structure and its composition in ways that are initially harmless. So, in biological terminology, we can say it this way. We can say that metabolism, which is the, um, you know, the, the whole network of processes that keeps people alive from one day to the next, it causes damage throughout life, even starting before we're born, and eventually, there's too much damage, and late in life, we get pathologies. That's all that aging is. So, what's the problem? Well, the problem is that we don't think of the relationship between aging and other diseases in the correct way. Most people will say, well, there are various types of disease. There's infectious diseases, that's column one. Then there's genetic diseases that a small number of us are unlucky to inherit. Then there's the chronic progressive diseases of old age, column three, like Alzheimer's disease and can most cancers and so on. And then most people would say that there's this fourth category out in the stratosphere, a completely separate phenomenon, which isn't really like a disease at all. And that's this thing they call aging itself, which consists of these very poorly defined, um, you know, nebulous things like frailty. You know, it includes something like sarcopenia. That's the decline in muscle mass as you get older. Those kinds of things. The thick black line should actually be there. And that matters a lot. Because if you put that black line in the right place, you can see two things about column three that you would otherwise get wrong. The first thing is, the things in column three are not like infections. And we should not, therefore, be trying to cure them in the way that we would try to cure infections, by eliminating them from the body. 
The fact is, the things in column three are side effects of being alive. That's why they only happen late in life. And you're not going to be able to eliminate something from the body if it's a side effect of being alive. The second thing that this location of the black line tells you is that the things in column three are actually very like the things in column four. There isn't actually any biological difference between columns three and columns four. The maintenance approach says, let's not try to actually slow down the process where damage is created, and let's also not try to in, in, in interfere with the process where damage creates sickness. Instead, let us separate those two processes from each other. Let us go in at the middle and periodically repair this damage. If we can do that, then we've done the job. We are keeping the level of damage down low enough that it doesn't cause any problems, but we are not having to alter the way that metabolism works. That we are, it's okay for metabolism to create damage at the normal rate. And the reason I say it's common sense is because we already do this. Here is a car that's more than 100 years old, and you know why it's more than 100 years old. It's not because it was built to last 100 years. It was probably built to last only 10 years. The reason it's lasted so long and it's working just as well as when it was built is because it's had a lot of preventative maintenance. That's all. Periodic, comprehensive, preventative maintenance actually works, can postpone any kind of loss of performance of a machine indefinitely, as long as you like. Aging is not a blessing in disguise. It is an absolute tragedy, and we must be brave enough. <laughs> Don't laugh. <laughs> Don't laugh. I mean it. We must be brave enough to acknowledge that laughing this off and distracting ourselves and changing the subject is costing lives today. It turns out that we only have to fix seven things. They're big things, all of them, but there's only seven of them, a manageable number. We have to fix seven different types of damage that I'm listing here on the left of this table. Things like cell loss. What is that? It's simply the phenomenon where cells die and they are not automatically replaced by the division of other cells. Parkinson's disease is an example of an aspect of aging that is mainly driven by that type of damage. And you already know the way in which we can do preventative maintenance against that type of damage, how we can repair that type of damage. What we do is simply we replace the cells using stem cells. And that's already happening for Parkinson's disease, among other things. Um, and I'd better stop there, really. Thank you very much. Thank you.